Hello and welcome aboard and welcome to Campo de Leo Jardim de Matas Airport in Brazil. We are in our Super Tucano Ambra Air EMB 314. Sometimes it come under shorts, which I think might be a goof and I can fix that later. But um, this does have a few problems I'm going to point out right now. One is the issue with the prop that you can see on the left. This is a known issue with uh, the service pack two on the flight simulator X accelerated, where that you just have to make an adjustment to the prop. The second problem is that the sound is alias to the Cessna 208. Um, it's called the 28B in the game, so you just have to change the sound config. That's kind of a pain in the butt, but if you get past that, we are here with a turboprop aircraft designed for light attack counterinsurgency, close air support, aerial reconnaissance in a low threat environment, as well as pilot training. Inside, she looks pretty darn sweet. I mean, it looks like you can hit all the little buttons. I mean, you can't, but you, you get the feel like I could reach down and flip all the little buttons if I wanted to. It's that one, prop D eyes. That one's not a button even though it is a button, but it gives you the feel that I could press all the buttons. And even if I can't pre press all the buttons, I like the idea that I can feel like I can press all the buttons. To me, that's, that's really cool. And the actuation looks right. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I need to turn on? Nah. Now, a few things I've noticed also. That I, that I want to point out. One is this gauge up here with the infinity sign. It's kind of squirrely when you first get in. So just be aware of that. Second, I've noticed that my nav is spinning. Not really sure what's up with that. But it's been doing that since I started the plane, got in the plane for the first time. So, you know, just couple things to be aware of that are kind of weird ish all right let's uh we're, our brakes are off let's check out our flaps here that's yeah, plenty of flappage we like lots of flappage little dudes looking around you don't need really any flappage right now <laughs> let's not have that as a view uh, let's do chase left side. Oh, that's a nice view. Uh, this, by the way, if you notice down in the description, there's two links. One is to the Tucano itself. The other is to the extra views. Read the readme. I have extra views on, and this is one of the extra views. Just an awesome extra little thing. You know, a little, little something, something to make it even better. Yeah. All right, let's fire up our Pratt Whitney Canada PT6A68C turboprop producing 1600 shaft horsepower. Okay, here it comes. Reach over and turn it up. All right, speed. Speed looks like we're climbing good. There we go. Let's get into the air. Get our gears up. Yeah. Nice. Very maneuverable little aircraft. Woo! <laughs> this aircraft was designed to operate high temperature and humidity conditions in extremely rugged terrain. We're going to kind of head for... I don't know where we're going to head, actually. <laughs> um, let's head this way. Oop. It is highly maneuverable, has a low heat signature, incorporates fourth generation avionics and weapons systems to deliver precision guided munitions. The request for a light attack aircraft was part of the Brazilian government's Amazon surveillance systems project. The aircraft would be responsible for intercepting illegal aircraft flights and patrolling Brazil's borders. The ALX project was a creation of the Air Force and it, which also needed a trainer to replace the Embraer EMB-326GB. 
it was specified that it had to be a turboprop aircraft with long range and autonomy, able to operate day and night in any condition and land on short airfields lacking any sort of infrastructure. In August 95, the Brazilian Ministry of Aeronautics awarded Ember Air the $50 million contract for the development of this aircraft. The aircraft differs from the baseline EMB 312 Tucano in several respects. This is a long list, so sit down and get ready here. <laughs> it is powered by the more powerful 1600 chef horsepower engine has a strengthened airframe to sustain higher G-loads and increased aircraft fatigue life, a reinforced landing gear for greater takeoff weight and heavier stores load, Kevlar armor protection, two internal wing-mounted 50 caliber machine guns, capacity to carry a variety of ordnance and five weapon hard points, night vision goggle compatible glass cockpit, hands-on throttle and stick controls, provisions for a data link, a video camera and recorder, embedded mission planning, forward-looking infrared, shaft flare dispensers, missile approach warning systems, radar warning receivers, zero-zero ejection seats, corrosion-protected airframe, side hinge canopy, and a windshield capable of withstanding bird strikes. Woo, let's fly like this for a while. Top speed, 367 miles an hour, range 827 miles. Ooh, that's kind of disconcerting to fly in this particular config. Let's get in the aircraft. Somewhere up here, there's supposed to be a big statue. Hey, I see the big statue. Let's uh, let's do a little flyby. What do you say? Should we do a little flyby? A little, little flyby? Okay, it's really hard to fly like that. <laughs> Hello there, statue dude. What's up, man? Is it? Oh, gosh. Am I going to hit a wing? No. Let's see how close we can get. <laughs> Whee! It's a fun little aircraft to fly. It seems to have just an endless reserve of power. I mean, I've, I'm loping it along, basically. I've been running it at about half throttle the whole way. She just takes it, she just lopes along at half throttle. But when I want the extra power, I just slam the throttle and away we go, and we get that extra power boost. It is turboprop, so it does have a spin-up. So you can't get the same sort of instantaneous response you'd get out of something like a radial engine. Because it's got to roll up. But I don't count that necessarily as a bad thing. It's a neat little trainer aircraft. It's a lot of fun to fly. You can get into some serious trouble with it, I'm sure. Uh, if you leave me with it long enough, I will crash it. But we all know that that's going to happen. I'm trying to find an airport, but I don't even know where one is. Hey, there's a there's a stadium. There's a stadium right there. I wonder if that's one of the World Cup stadiums. What do you think? I don't know. Kind of crazy to be flying like this. All right, let's check our numbers. Shift one. Hey, look, there's a cockpit. Shift two, there is a GPS. Hey, I can find where I'm going now. Shift three, that's it. All right, so GPS. Let's, let's get ourselves not upside down. So we're going this way now. All right, that should take us. Okay, so it's on an island. Oh, look, there it is. Woo <laughs> All right. So it's a fun little plane. Definitely gives you the ability to just flip it around treat it rough because it's it just seems to accept it this uh link that is in the description is a link to th uh three aircraft two of them in this sort of black livery and one of them in uh, a very ugly orange and white livery let's pop some air brakes hey look there's our air brake right underneath our belly look at that All right, let's get in our aircraft and see what we can do about slowing down and landing the thing. It's 
always the fun part is landing it. I do like the uh, the fact that I just look wherever I want. I don't I don't feel like I lose my uh, spatial awareness the way I do in some mods. All right, we seem to be heading for the ground very quickly, but that's all right. This is a f just, I keep saying it, but it just, it feels like the fun little aircraft, kind of like the extra that comes in the game. The, that little just aerobatic plane you can just flip around and toy with and, and just have a blast with. This feels like a little bit bigger version of that. And I, I really think uh, if, if you're looking for a neat trainer, sort of a stepping stone to get closer to the, the feel of um, more advanced aircraft, it's definitely worth checking out. Again, you do, you might have to make a, an edit to the sound config file, add a B into the 208 so you get the, uh, the proper aircraft. Is there something on the runway? There's a truck on the runway. That's okay. Ooh, nice landing. Kind of hard, I think, but that's okay. Can, does it have reverse? No, that's okay. I didn't need reverse anyway, honestly. Ooh, look at that. We already stopped. Wow. Go. Go. All right, now, supposedly, there's a second cockpit. Oh, we got left wing. I guess there isn't a second cockpit. Where's my aircraft? Uh, we have the frontal view. It's always a nice view. We've got our side views. Why am I taxiing? I don't know. Top down. Oh, we're moving fast. <laughs> she just wants to go, 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 go. Stop aircraft. I'm stuck in a left of a left look because I left it at that. Okay, there we go. Stop, you stinker. Okay, we've stopped. See that thing going wacky over there? Okay, take my finger off the brake. Okay, she stays. Clear. There we go. So there you are. I've been there, Tevers. This is your plane spotlight of the Ember Air EMB 314 Super Tucano. Again, there's two links down below. One gets you the plane in three liveries. The other gets you extra views, which is just like a little bit of icing on the cake. Remember, you may have to edit the sound config to add the B to the 208 to get sound. It's not necessarily a terrible thing, but it is a minor edit you need to remember. Till next time. Happy flying, everybody, and I landed another plane.